I had quite a large overbite, which my parents told me I had since birth, but obviously I don't remember. And um, I don't know, I just sort of uh, felt slightly different. A sort of slight lack of comfort in my face. I am often told that I looked quite cute back then, but sort of in a small animal type of way less of an attractive person type of way? Um, I think that there were, there were a couple of problems. Um, the first one, that it just didn't feel good, that actually he, um, he struggled to close his mouth properly and that didn't feel great to him. And I think that there was an element of chewing that, that he was finding difficult. Um, there was a, a, a visual element as well of, of his chin being, being um, further back than it should be. It just didn't make any sense that they were going to wait until he was in adolescence. It didn't make sense to be waiting that long. And, um, you know, he's my son and I wanted to do the best I could for him. I wanted some more choices, really. Nathan had the sort of classical sticky back jaw like this and frequently orthodontists will take out two teeth and they'll pull that back which I personally think is it just, it's a disaster, my personal view. Um, sometimes you'll use functional appliances. I'm concerned that functional appliances tend to do this, and as do many of the other methods of non-extraction that people aim to do. So we did the opposite for Nathan. So where his teeth were sticky out like this, I did this. And that allowed me to get that mandible right way forward. Yes. It was a risk, certainly when the treatment started um, and we were told it was going to get worse before it got better. Um, I read as much as I could. I did have um, you know, somebody else who was going, who was ahead of us in the game. She was a couple of years older and um, so I could see um, how it was impacting her, how she was dealing with it and what was actually happening. I, had, I did have an element of uh, comfort from that. Uh, but yes, of course, uh, it, you know, it is a worrying thing, but I was there with Nathan in, in the surgery every other week. So um, it did feel as if I had a hand in helping it, stopping it, if anything uh, was to go wrong. I didn't ever really feel that that was the case. It all made logical sense to me. I remember sort of doing the early parts of the procedure and seeing how what was being done to me changed over time and understanding what was going on with my face. And I always felt like I was going in the right direction. I noticed a positive change quite far into the treatment. You do have to hold your nerve. You do have to wait and there is a lot of patience, which is a, an issue for the child. The child needs to also understand that. Um, and I can't quite recall because we've done this for the last eight years, but you know, it was, a, it was probably a year or more into the treatment where I could positively see that it, it was, um, it, you know, things were changing, it was going to have a great outcome. There was one point at which I just got completely fed up with the whole thing and I gave it up for a few months and when we came back, there had been a sort of drop in how the treatment was working for me. I sort of receded back into my old ways. It has been a struggle for Nathan. It's been eight years of him having to wear a, a different contraptions in his mouth, which probably haven't been that comfortable. We had some moments with Nathan and we, we had to get him back on board and I had to sit down on his level and talk to him in what's called an age appropriate manner, which I believe I'm quite good at. And you know, you've got to make that bond with a child. And you've got to sit down and say, look, what do you want? You know, how are we going to progress? You know, we've been at this for a long period of time. Do you, do you want to throw that away? I think one of the greatest motivational tools that I have is the start photograph of the individuals I'm treating. Because I can hold up their start photograph and I can say, do you want to go back to this? After that, having seen how I was when I was sticking with the treatment, how I was when I decided to give it up. Seeing that um, regression sort of made me think that I really have to commit to it. And um, 
since then it's just become a kind of natural part of my life that I don't really even think about anymore. I think that my experience over the last eight years has been an interesting one as well. Um, my hand hasn't been held. I've been taken along in, as a partnership. The process has been explained, my views considered, um, and I think the relationship has been a very, um, a very rewarding one where Nathan has um, been helped, uh, looked after, but also respected, as, as I feel I've been respected as well. And we feel that we've been part of something that is new and exciting. I'm definitely confident in the decision, well, my parents' decision to put me through this and uh, bring me to where I am now. So I think I'm definitely in a better place than I would have been. I look at myself in the mirror now and I'm happy with what I see. When I, I just see Nathan's sense of self-confidence, his um, can-do attitude, his, um, you know, he, he is a better person. He's going to go on to achieve more, to do more. And that's, that's down to our teamwork. That's down to what we've done. And I'm working my I'm proud of him. It's been fantastic for Nathan. It has um, helped him where maybe operations might have been the only option, or maybe there wouldn't have been another option. Um, it's not about the, stra the straightness of Nathan's teeth. It's about the structure and the form. And Orthotropics appears to look broadly at um, all areas that might actually help, rather than being one-dimensional. It would be great if other families were offered this type of treatment. Everyone wants to look good, everyone wants to feel good and to be attractive and when that's offered to you I think it's natural to take the opportunity.